Hi, welcome to today's vlog. Today I'm going to be reviewing my Sios Alto mouthpiece, but before I do that, something just arrived in the post this morning. Ta-da! Oh, hang on, I should do ta-da like that, shouldn't I? And then it's the right way around. Key leaves! Key leaves have sent me some things for my horns, but also they have sent me some to give away. So there will be a competition so that you can win a free set of key leaves. We'll give away two of them to uh, you guys. Uh, make sure you uh, hit the subscribe button because that's going to enable you to know when that video comes out. If you hit the bell button, that means immediately I do that video, you will know about it. So make sure you do that now if you're not already a subscriber. And if you are a subscriber, you've not hit the bell, hit the bell right now. I'll give you five seconds. Hit the bell. My favourite alto saxophone mouthpiece that I've owned in the last, say, 10 years was this Eisen mouthpiece, but uh, I don't know if you can tell what's happened to the tip on that. It completely got destroyed. I got it repaired, as I mentioned in this vlog, um, but it broke again, and whilst it sounded great, it wasn't always um, the best thing. This is my most commonly used mouthpiece. It's a Didario Select Jazz. Uh, again, you can watch that up here. This is a great value mouthpiece. As I've said before about these Didario ones, the best bang for buck I think you can get for a mouthpiece knocking about until Sios came along, maybe. Let me just quickly go back. Now, I've I started on tenor saxophone age 10, as I've said before, many, many times on the vlog. Uh, and then I started playing soprano when I was 16 uh, because my college had a soprano, so I picked up a Yanninger, so I was soprano and went along those. If you've watched the vlog before, you know all about this anyway, but some of you may not have watched before. This might be the first time you've come here. I'm well aware of that. But I didn't start taking up the alto, probably until I kind of played bits and bobs of alto for depth gigs, but really started playing the alto properly around about the age of 20, 21, when I started teaching. And... I've not done many gigs on alto, so primarily now, these days, if I'm playing alto, I'm doing classical gigs, and I'm using this Selma Soloist mouthpiece, which I think is fantastic. I've got a classical recital, two classical recitals, put this down so I don't break it, coming up in the summer. Again, if you're a regular vlog, vlog watcher, you know the kind of torment I'm having trying to get that done. But the vast majority of the time, for alto for me, it's a teaching instrument and then playing classical music. I do use it sometimes and I have had calls to play it on some gigs, but the vast majority of the time, because I am very fortunate that I get to play with my own band more than I get to get play with other people, I tend to choose tenor and soprano. And in fact, as I've mentioned before, I'm trying to get more soprano onto the gigs than I've had before now. So alto, yes, I play it, but it's not necessarily how I hear my sound all the way through. That said, I still want to have that facility to play it. Uh, and in terms of alto players, obviously Charlie Parker, which is kind of why I got a white one. Um, uh, I really, really like Sonny Stitt on soprano, on soprano, on alto. I really like Sonny Stitt on alto. Um, I'm trying to think of other alto players, Phil Woods. Um, but I don't really have, I mean, apart from Bird, I don't really have an alto player. I'm kind of, I mean, obviously I appreciate Kenny Garrett and all that sort of stuff, but yeah, I'm a bit more open on my alto sound. <laughs> So I should say the saxophone is a Yanagasawa W01. Uh, it's a Daddario Select Jazz 3M Reed. Uh, this is what uh, Thomas did on the mouthpiece design for me. He said, for your alto tone, this one will be a bit different. For a more balanced tone, I prefer curved baffles with large chambers for a big and fat tone without going too dark nor too bright. For the tip note, it's slightly bigger than the Eisen was, and this is at 0 0.85 inches. Uh, this should give you a well-balanced mouthpiece along with this combination. It's definitely got some power, and I'll rig it up to the proper mic in a minute, and we'll give it a proper test on there. Um, the only thing I'm mainly struggling with is sometimes with the intonation on it. That's maybe because it's a much wider lay, uh, and it's more sensitive to my lip maybe than what I've been used to in the past. And of course, I don't play a huge amount of alto all the time. So it's definitely got some balls to the sound. It really, really projects through and kicks through, and it's very, very loud. <laughs>
There you go. A few of you have said on some of the other videos, why can you contrast it with this? That's a different video. This is a review video of this mouthpiece. It wouldn't be fair to start sticking it up against other things. I know I have put some things up against review against other things, but that's always been within the context of first doing a review video. So I may do some comparison ones with the other mouthpieces. If that's what you want, comment below. Remember, I do read the comments, even the nasty ones, I do read them. Uh, but yeah, I mean, for now, I'm not saying they're being nasty with those, I'm just saying that this is a review video, so I won't be comparing and contrasting it with anything else. Now, sounds great, nice and fat, big uh, alto sound, everything else in it. The disappointing two things about it for me are the two things that I love about the tenor and the soprano mouthpiece that uh, Sios have made for me. Um, it's not that great down low. Um, the low B flat does not speak easily and likewise up top the altissimo register doesn't sing out. It feels like there's a bit of resistance there that might be in the design. I hasten to add I'm going back to Sios, well I'm going back, I'm going to Sios in June uh, to visit the factory. There'll be a video for you on that so make sure you are subscribing again. Um, but I'll get them to look at it and maybe make some adjustments for me there and then. But, you know, it might be that it's very wide lay and that's what happens with these Sios mouthpieces on wide lays. And also, I've not normally been someone who plays on particularly wide lay mouthpieces for quite a while now. I'm very, very happy with it. I'm really enjoying playing with it. I can't play it on a classical gig. It's far too open. There's, there's too much power there. So definitely on the classical gigs, I'll be staying with the uh, Selma Soloist. But I think, you know, for teaching and the odd jazz gig that I play, uh, I will do this one. The one thing I'd like to try it with, and I don't do them very often anymore, is big band section gigs. Because I reckon this might cut through a bit too much. I reckon some band leaders might moan at me for having such an open sound. But you can always get it closed off. And maybe that's what we'll have to do when I go and visit Sios in June. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. By the way, just very, very quickly, I should have I mentioned this at the start of the video. I meant to it today at the start. Just a quick poll here because you know a lot of you have been asking about alto mouthpieces. Who plays just sort of tenor? Who plays just alto? Who? How many of you played both um, and kind of all three if you've got soprano or all four if you've got the baritone in as well but just be interested to know kind of where the balance lays within you guys uh, who watch this channel in terms of alto versus tenor because I realize that primarily being a tenor player myself I spend a lot of time talking about tenors um, and if you want more alto stuff then let me know. Um, but yeah, there you go. I don't know what's happened to this English weather, but it's pretty dire. I looked on Time Hop yesterday and I was barbecuing a roast chicken this time last year. Today and this whole week, it's kind of like, it's miserable. It's really wet and horrible and really yuck. Anyway, um, been out. Always nice to, to tell people that I wish you appreciate them and say thank you with flowers. It's always a good tip, gentlemen. I'm going to head back to the studio. I'm going to film some B-roll for you of those mouthpieces, which you've already seen. Uh, and then I've got a little bit of practice I need to do. I need to run through a few things. And I want to show you a quick look at a new app that I'm going to do a review of in a couple of weeks' time. But I'm blown away by how amazing it is. It's called AnyTune Pro. Uh, one of my students recommended it to me. It's great. I love it when students recommend things to me. Uh, and I've just had a little play with it before and I can already see such tremendous potential in it. So here is my iPad, and here's the screen so you guys can see it. And this is this app, AnyTune Pro Plus, which I'm gonna do a full review of in a couple of weeks time. So make sure you're subscribing. What I love about it is this integration with Dropbox and everything else like that. So if I go, it's not gonna work now I'm saying all this, you can guarantee it, but I go plus here, 
and go to my Dropbox, it'll open up my Dropbox folder. So this is uh, part of our Joel Fromm transcription project on Cambridge saxophone. I've pulled the clips in from uh, here. I need to put it onto the um, speaker so you guys can hear it. Ah, and it's automatically speeding the speed up. I didn't know he was doing that. I need to play with this more often before I do before I do the full review for you. But it looks a really exciting app. If you've got it already, let me know some hints and tips on it and uh, let's see how we get along. So to conclude my review of this, which is basically what we're all here for today, it's another great mouthpiece. I'm not sure why it's not giving me what I want down the bottom end and as necessarily as free blowing as my uh, tenor and soprano mouthpieces are but it's still a fantastic mouthpiece. It's definitely an upgrade on the two mouthpieces. I've been playing on it already, the Eisen and the Daddario Select Jazz. Um, I'm looking forward to being able to go back to Sios. I mean, it's not urgent. I don't need to send it back to them. I'm gonna see them in six weeks or so, so we'll get it tidied up then. For me, I don't think I can speak any higher than Sios than to say, look, I mean, there's my soprano, there's my alto, and there's my tenor and they're all on Sias mouthpieces. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure you check out my last vlog here. This is a random one that I'm gonna let the computer cheats for you and uh, make sure you're hitting the subscribe button. I'm gonna be talking about key leaves at the weekend. So uh, I'm gonna put these on now onto my tenor and onto my alto and I'm gonna be able to send some over for you guys as well. So thank you very much for watching. Bye bye.